Disney's 2012 John Carter was meant to kick off a trilogy, but we never got those sequels. Now, there's buzz that the studio is looking to give this epic sci-fi another shot. Here's the scoop on what we know about the unrealized plans for John Carter 2 and 3, and what Disney might be aiming for next. Directed by Toy Story's Andrew Stanton, Disney's John Carter adapts Edgar Rice Burroughs' sci-fi classic, A Princess of Mars. The film does an awesome job of creating a rich, mythology-packed universe filled with cosmic battles, romantic twists, and some impressive CGI action. The story follows John Carter, a Civil War veteran who mysteriously ends up on Mars. As he explores the planet, he encounters bizarre creatures and discovers he can defy gravity, leaping huge distances. There's a ton of source material from the original novels for at least two more sequels, and the 2012 film left us on a pretty exciting cliffhanger. Although Stanton had plans for a trilogy, those sequels never happened, which makes you wonder what went wrong with Disney's John Carter. As Andrew Stanton shared with Collider, John Carter 2 was set to be titled Gods of Mars. The film would kick off with Lynn Collins' Deja narrating a prologue, recounting the events of the first film to their son, Carthoris, whom she fears will never meet his father, John Carter. Things take a twist when Kieran Hines' character, Tardus Moores, swoops in to take the child to bed, but he's not who he seems. He's actually Matai Shang, who kidnaps Carthoris and vanishes. This dramatic moment kicks off the movie's opening credits right where the first film left off, John Carter's return to Barsoom. Fast forward, and after a decade apart, Carter learns that Deja has taken to the river, hoping it will lead her to their son. Teaming up with Tars Tarkas, Carter follows her path and discovers a hidden underground city ruled by the firstborn race. This faction worships the goddess Isis and controls the planet's essential resources – water, air, food and plants – since its beginning. Carter soon realizes that goddess Isis is just another of Matai's shape-shifting personas. Determined to save his son and expose Matai to the firstborns, the stakes rise when Carter nearly harms Carthoris who has been genetically enhanced into an adult superhuman warrior by Matai. The climax builds as Deja, Carter and their son finally reunite and the red, green and firstborn races unite to defeat the Therns. This thrilling adventure promised epic moments, emotional reunions and intense conflicts that fans were eager to see unfold. On the flip side, John Carter III, titled Warlord of Mars, dives into Carter's race against time to stop the Therns from destroying the entire planet. These shape-shifting villains are manipulating Martian leaders, fueling conflict among the races to create chaos. Meanwhile, Deja is hard at work inventing a device to reveal the Therns in their disguises, but the crafty Therns manage to stay one step ahead and destroy her invention. Things take a darker turn when they kill Taylor Kitsch's John Carter, but plot twist, they don't realize this Carter is just a copy. The original wakes up back on Earth, ready to jump back into the action. As tensions rise and the threat of a world war looms, Carter and his family embark on a perilous journey, carrying their last Thern detector to the highest peak by following the Thern trail. In a gripping moment, Edgar helps Carter fend off Thern Pinkertons, allowing him to return to Mars. In the climax, John finally confronts Matai Shang, leading to an epic showdown. Carter's victory not only saves the planet, but also earns him the title of Warlord of Mars. This installment promises high stakes, thrilling battles, and the culmination of Carter's journey, making fans wish they could see it come to life on the big screen. As we all know, the sequels never materialized because John Carter flopped at the box office. With a whopping production budget of $307 million, the film fell short of expectations, raking in only $281 million worldwide. Disney even projected a staggering $200 million loss on the film, making it a classic example of a big-budget disaster, much like Waterworld. The fate of John Carter 2 and 3 is a real bummer, but it also highlights how even small tweaks in marketing and branding can lead to huge financial setbacks. After losing the rights to the property in 2014, any chance for those sequels vanished leaving Andrew Stanton's exciting ideas just sitting on a shelf. It's a cautionary tale about how critical the right approach is in promoting a film to ensure its success. 
Although John Carter was a flop when it came out in 2012, it's been getting some love from critics and viewers over the years. Many now feel it didn't deserve the backlash it received. Rumor has it that Disney is finally taking notice and might be planning a reboot of John Carter to give Edgar Rice Burroughs' Martian sci-fi adventure another shot at becoming a successful franchise. While multiple sources have reported on Disney's interest in rebooting John Carter, nothing official has come from the studio yet. Still, given the popularity of the original novel, it wouldn't be surprising if Disney wanted to revisit this classic material. After all, they've been known to dig into older properties for fresh projects like the recent Percy Jackson series on Disney+. There are whispers that if the John Carter reboot happens, it could be as a series on Disney+. While we should definitely take these rumors with a grain of salt until there's official word, this would be an exciting development for fans who were left hanging without the promised John Carter 2 and 3. Disney's recent track record hasn't been the best, especially with their reboots like Snow White, which has stirred up a lot of chatter due to its focus on a woke agenda featuring Rachel Zegler as a Latina lead. Now, don't get me wrong, she's super talented and her singing in Hunger Games proves that. But there's a feeling that Disney's been pushing these changes too hard, especially with their Marvel content like She-Hulk and the Marvels which have also faced criticism for swapping gender roles of classic villains from the comics. In 1931, director Bob Clampett pitched a feature-length adaptation of A Princess of Mars. Burroughs was on board, but knew that with the tech of that time, a live-action film would be nearly impossible. Clampett opted for animation, which seemed more feasible. MGM was excited and everything was set, but when test footage showed an eight-legged beast, Audiences found the concept of a man on Mars too outlandish. MGM pulled the plug and the project was shelved. Had that animated film been released, Disney's trajectory might have looked very different. They could have been overshadowed by MGM and Bob Clampett might have been the household name instead of Walt Disney. So it makes sense that Disney might want to give John Carter another shot, especially considering its potential legacy and the wealth of stories still untapped. And that's that for today's video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.